friends and welcome back. In our last video, we looked at John chapter 8, where Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will so set you free. We saw though up in John chapter 8 and verse 28, that Jesus first said, the things that he spoke were what he had been taught by the Father. We've talked about revelation knowledge. I want to pick up today in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4 in verse 13, Paul says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. A belief is confidence built upon knowledge. In the case of the Word of God, that knowledge is re revelation knowledge of the Word of God. We've looked at the parable of the seed time and harvest. We've looked at the fact that the word of God is the seed of God. As we plant the seed of God within our soul and allow it to grow up, we begin to receive revelation knowledge. And that's what Paul is talking about. We having the same spirit of faith. How does that spirit of faith work? Well, Jesus gave us a, a hint in John chapter 8, in verse 28, when he said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I'm he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Notice, as the Father has taught me, I speak these things. And then Paul says, we have the same spirit of faith. As it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. What drove Jesus' word? What produced the words that Jesus spoke? He tells us, as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. I believed, and therefore I speak. How do we believe? How do we develop that belief that drives our words, that produces the words of faith, that releases the power of God, that releases the provision of God, that releases the healing power of God, that releases, you know, all of the power, all of the provision that God has for us? We do it by speaking those things that have been revealed to us. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would be with them always. It is the Spirit of God would teach them the things of Jesus. Jesus said that the Father taught him, and then he spoke. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he, the Spirit of truth, will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So notice, the, notice how this works here. One thing you're going to find as you develop in your relationship with God, as you spend time with God, walking with God, is that the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father, they work very tightly together. The Father taught Jesus, Jesus spoke. Then Jesus came to the end of his ministry. He told his disciples in, verse, in John chapter 14, in John chapter 16, he said, he told his disciples he was leaving, and he said in verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you that, that truth, it is expedient, profitable, better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I will depart, I will send him to you. Jesus operated on this earth as a man anointed by the Spirit of God. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, we see how God anointed Jesus now with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus operated under the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus operated under the anointing of the Holy Spirit when he was ministering on the earth. What we read about in the Gospels, when we read about the blind eyes being opened, when we read about the lame walking, when we hear, read about the deaf hearing, we're reading about a man operating under the anointing of the Spirit of God. Was he the Son of God? Yes, he was. But he laid aside his divinity and came as a man to be our substitute. He was born of the Spirit through the Virgin Mary. But then in Luke chapter 3, we read the account of his baptism, and we see the Holy Spirit descending upon him. The Father anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Jesus anoints you and I with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it is expedient, profitable, better for you that I go away. Why? So that he could send the Holy Spirit. 
And then he says, tells us in verse 13, how about when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall speak hear, that shall he speak. The Holy Spirit will speak into our spirit the truths of God that are revealed to him by Jesus, because Jesus sent him to teach us the things of the Father. Jesus received those things from the Father. We receive the Father, the things of the Father from the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit reveals our position, our identity in Christ Jesus to us through the Word of God, then we will be with Paul saying, as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. People, when people come to us and say, well, I don't understand why there's so much power in your words, it is because I believe, and therefore I have spoken. As you start to get a hold of this and start to understand the truths of God's word, looking at the parable of the sower, Jesus said the sower sows the word, but then we saw in the last video, Jesus said you won't understand any of the parables if you don't understand this one. And I think about, you know, there's, I remember in school they talked about the Rosetta Stone. With Egyptian hieroglyphics, people just really didn't understand how those hieroglyphics worked or how to read them. The Rosetta Stone provided the keys that unlocked it and enabled them to read and understand. It opened the door of understanding for the researchers. In the same sense, what Jesus is telling us about the parable of the sower is it is our Rosetta Stone. There are a lot of people who study the Word of God as an intellectual exercise. There's a lot of people who have memorized whole chapters of the Word of God, but they have no power. Why? Because they do not understand the concept of seed, time, and harvest. You will not understand the words. You will not understand how to walk by faith without understanding the concept of seed, time, and harvest. We take the Word of God as a seed. We plant it in our soul. We give it time to grow. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that the sower sows the Word, and then he goes to sleep he rises night and day. Why? Because he knows there's nothing that you or I can do to make it grow faster or slower. We plant it in the ground and the ground produces of herself. We can water it by praying in the spirit. We can water it in prayer, but we have to give the seed time to grow. The problem is we become distracted. We saw in Mark chapter 4 how Jesus said that the devil comes to steal the word. In, Mark, in Matthew chapter 13, Going over the, the same parable, the first type of ground, Satan is able to steal the word from people who do not understand it. The problem we have is people start into the word of God. They start planting in their soul. They make a commitment. They make, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to do this. But then affliction comes. Then things start getting tough. And they give up before they get to their harvest. And then they say, well, this just didn't work. It did work but you gave up and began to plant something else, it is working. But what's being harvested in your life is not what you wanted. It's not life because you stopped planting the word and started planting other things because you became discouraged. I've done the same thing. We have to continue in the word. And that's why Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 8, if you continue in my words, then you will be my disciple indeed. One problem we have in the church today is we become very good at making converts, but very bad at making disciples. A disciple is somebody who continues in the Word. A convert is somebody who acknowledges Jesus as Lord. A disciple makes the things of God, the kingdom of God, their life. A convert will attend church on Sundays to check a box, hoping to get their get-out-of-jail card. In this case, they're get out of hell card. But a disciple is one who continues in the word. One who looks at instructions that Jesus gave in the, to his disciples when he said, you heal the sick, you cast out devils, you raise the dead, you cleanse the lepers. They look at instructions like in Mark chapter 16, where Jesus said, those who believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils. And they say, I am not going to quit until I see those things happening in my life. I've heard people say these things have passed away, and they're, they're no longer for us today. But Jesus only made one requirement in Mark chapter 16. He said, those who believe 
these signs shall follow them that believe. We cannot say that these signs have, followed, have passed away and are no longer relevant today unless we're also willing to say that believing is no longer required today. We obviously know that is not true because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul tells us here, I believed and therefore I have spoken. Well, why would he say that if believing was going to pass away? Paul told the jailer, you believe in your heart and you and your family will be saved. You cannot be saved without believing. So we know that believing has not passed away. So we know that these signs shall still follow them that believe. A belief is a firm persuasion based upon knowledge received. We plant the word of God in our soul. We meditate upon the word of God. We allow it to become a vision. We allow it to become reality in our soul. It's not about how many chapters we read, how many verses we read, how many we've memorized or anything else like this. It's how much time we've spent meditating, focusing, pondering on it until it became revelation knowledge. I look back many years ago, just before I met my wife, I developed a, a malignant tumor just above my right eye. It grew to the size of almost a golf ball. I remember a doctor sitting across from me and telling me the diagnosis. It's a malignant melanoma, and if we are really aggressive, we might be able to give you six months. That was more than almost actually more than 17 years ago now. What changed my life? What brought about the healing? I got into the Word. I meditated upon the Word. The Holy Spirit led me to a series of messages. I listened to those messages over and over and over. I was not a forgetful hearer. I listened. I meditated. I thought until I could see myself healed. When that seed of God's Word planted my soul began to generate revelation knowledge of the healing covenant, I actually came to the point where I could no longer see the tumor on my head. I don't even know where when it left. And that's what the Word of God will do. You can look at the circumstances around you. You can look at the doctor's report. You can look at your bank account. And all you're doing is planting facts in your soul and in your heart. You can choose not to look at those things. We're not denying them. And yes, we have natural responsibilities. But you can choose instead to look at the Word of God, to focus on the Word of God, to ponder on the Word of God, to meditate on the Word of God until it becomes revelation knowledge, until you get to the point where you can no longer see your empty bank account, where you can no longer see your symptoms, where you no longer can see the doctor's report. Because revelation knowledge has kicked in, and it's beginning to produce. And when your soul gets to that point where you have that vision and you cannot see yourself any way but the way the Word of God portrays you, it will affect your natural body. It will affect your bank account. We're not denying those things are there, but we are denying their right to exist in our lives. God has not called you to a life of toil or strife. God has called you to walk in His divine life. He desires to elevate you, to bring you to a higher place, but it all begins to see with his seed of his word. As you plant that seed, you'll find your need will go. For the need will be pushed aside by the seed as it begins to grow. That seed will choke out the life of the facts around you, and they will no longer have a place or an option to stay. For you see, it is not a denial, but it is looking to a higher place. For we're looking to the things of the Spirit, allowing Him to take us higher and higher each and every day. We sow the Word, we plant it deep. We allow it to grow and develop a deep root system within our heart. As it does that, revelation knowledge will begin to flow, pushing out all the junk that has grown. We'll push it out, we'll walk in His flow, we'll see the Spirit in a new light, because we'll see from the glory sight. We'll walk, we'll walk, and we'll, we'll see the enemy run in fright. Because we'll walk in that revelation knowledge, we'll see with the divine sight. That seed of God's word will produce within our hearts, and we'll begin to see the flow of his spirit, not only on our needs, but out to the world around us. We will see 
the power flow, will see the miraculous, and they will know the kingdom has come. And it will no longer be a toil or, or trouble or sorrow, but it will be a free and light life walking in the joy of the Lord. We'll see that power flow. God has called us up to, some, to such a higher level of life than you and I are living. We can do this. We can get into the Word of God. We can plant the Word. We can meditate upon it. We can walk in the reality of His Word. And we can come to the place that we can say with Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. We see the things that are not seen by the eye of faith, by the eye of the Word of God by sowing the word and allowing it to develop that vision. In the Old Testament, we see without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision of God's provision, there is only death ahead. But when we take the word and we set everything else aside and we sow the word into our souls and allow the word to begin to produce that life of God within us, we will see his provision begin to manifest. We will see his power begin to flow. God has such a higher plan for each for you and I. But we have to take his word and we have to begin to sow it and allow it to grow within us. He wants to move us to a higher position than we've walked. And the reason we struggle, the reason it's so hard is because our vision is on the facts and the situations around us instead of on him and on his word. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. The Holy Spirit came to teach us, to guide us, to lead us. The Holy Spirit is with you as you're sitting and watching these videos. But we have to acknowledge his presence. We have to acknowledge him and invite him to teach us. You know, one of the things, the translations of comforter is a standby. And far too many of us have left the Holy Spirit just standing by in the corner of the room, just waiting to help us. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself into our lives. We have to invite him in. He desires to teach us. In fact, I have found that one of the things that brings him the most joy is opening the word of God to me. He wants to do the same for you. There is so much more than you and I have experienced, but it takes pressing into the word of God and allowing the word of God to become revelation knowledge. When it begins to birth that revelation, then we will find ourselves walking by faith and not by sight. Walking by the word of God and not by the things perceived by our five physical senses. That is what Paul was talking about. The things which are not seen are eternal. The things that are not perceived by our five physical senses are eternal. How do we perceive them? We perceive them with the mirror of God's word, by looking into the word of God, by looking, as we've talked about so many times in these videos, at our position in Christ, at the fact that we were created in righteousness and pure holiness, Ephesians 4, 24. The fact that we are accepted in the beloved in Ephesians chapter 1. The fact that we are new creations in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The fact that as he is, so are we in this world. In 1 John 4, 17, allowing that to become revelation knowledge, taking it, meditating upon it, thinking on it, pondering it, making it first and foremost in our lives until it becomes revelation knowledge. Yes, we are going to have natural responsibilities we have to take care of. I have to go into work on a daily basis too. But you do not have to set aside God while you're at work. Bring the Holy Spirit with you. Allow him to help you in your work. Think on the things that you've, met, that you've been studying. Allow, you know, Take breaks for the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to become first in your life. He, Jesus said, if you will seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things shall be added unto you. But these things shall not be added unto you if you are not seeking first the Word of God. People become discouraged and talk about how, well, faith, I tried that faith stuff. It just didn't work. The problem is they didn't continue in the word. To say, well, I just tried that faith stuff is equivalent to say, I tried it, but I just wasn't willing to continue. But didn't Jesus say in John chapter 8, if you continue my word, then you will be my disciples. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is not something we try. This is something we do. Will we make mistakes along the road? Will we fall off and sometimes not give as much attention as, as we need to? Yes. But the Holy Spirit will always be willing and waiting to pick up 
and to help carry us. If we'll just turn and look to him and say, hey, I haven't been giving it attention as much as I needed to. God loves you. God has a plan for you. But for you to walk in that plan, you must put the word of God first. You must allow the word of God to wash over your soul. As Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. We renew our mind by, re by looking into the word, meditating upon it. And I want you to look at this. Some of this as we close out this video today in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So again, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as is written, I believed and therefore I've spoken and also believed and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Jesus the Lord shall raise up us also by Jesus and to present us with you. For all things are for your sakes and that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outer man perishes, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding internal weight of glory. Isn't that interesting? Paul was settled in who he was in Christ Jesus. He knew his identity before his master. He knew who he was, and he looked at his afflictions and called them light afflictions. We can read in 2 Corinthians, Paul was shipwrecked three times. He was beaten with rods. He was stoned and left for dead. And yet he had the testimony for our light afflictions. Why? Because he walked in the revelation of the word of God. We see that in Galatians chapter 1. When it becomes revelation knowledge, there will be afflictions. There will be trials. The enemy will do everything he can to get you off this path. But as the word of God begins to take root, as your mind is renewed by the word of God, and you begin to look at yourself through the lens of God's word, the afflictions become less important. The way people treat you, you start to understand that you are sealed in Christ Jesus, and this is not about you, it's about the Word. And that's why Jesus said, the afflictions come for the Word's sake. Our time is up today. I thank you for joining me. Please let us know if there's anything we can stay with you in prayer. Carol and I are ready. We love you, and we really appreciate you joining us. Until the next video. God bless you.